This is Vladimir Putin at a naval parade in 2023. Reaffirming Russia's new maritime doctrine to establish Russia as a great maritime power and to defend its national interests by all means necessary. Chief among those interests is the Arctic. Controlling the Arctic's rich resources and strategic value has long been an ambition of Soviet and Russian leaders, and Putin is no different. He also aspires to make the Arctic a pillar of Russia's return to great power. And now these ambitions are becoming a reality. So how is Russia taking control of the Arctic? In 2007, divers placed a ceremonial Russian flag on the seabed beneath the North Pole and claimed an area contested by both Canada and Denmark. At the time, the stunt was not taken seriously. But in February 2023, the data behind the majority of Russia's claim was validated by a UN commission. Although this approval is not the final word on the rights to the Arctic, the claim would give Russia an additional 1.7 million square kilometers of seabed. Russia estimates that this claimed territory has more than 17.3 billion tons of oil and 85.1 trillion cubic meters of gas. And Moscow is firmly in the driving seat for controlling these resources. The country currently owns nearly half of the polar territory and 24,000 kilometers of coastline. This territorial dominance has allowed Russia to expand its military significantly in the region over the past 10 years. The Kremlin would argue that it's protecting its borders, as well as major infrastructure projects focused on extracting natural resources. But at the same time, Russia is controlling strategically important maritime passageways, which has tightened its grip on the Arctic. This is Alexandraland, home to one of Russia's state-of-the-art Trefoil military compounds and an upgraded airbase. It's the country's northernmost military outpost and lies in close proximity to Norway's Svalbard archipelago and Denmark's Greenland territory. It provides crucial air, sea and land military capabilities to safeguard the Kola Peninsula, home to Russia's second strike nuclear arsenal and their northern fleet headquarters. But this is just one of Russia's many Arctic military strongholds. Since 2005, it's reopened at least 50 Soviet-era military bases including 13 air bases, 10 radar stations, and 20 border outposts. It has also modernized its northern fleet, which includes upgrading its number of submarines capable of launching long-range nuclear weapons, and the development of new hypersonic missiles designed to evade US sensors and defenses. Russia has by far the largest number of troops stationed in the region, and routinely conducts Arctic tactical exercises. It also has the world's largest icebreaker fleet, with more than 40 ships, vastly outnumbering those of other NATO countries. Russia's bases in the Arctic Circle outnumber NATO's by three to one. Some experts estimate that it would take Western nations at least 10 years to catch up with Russia's military in the region. This disparity is a big problem for NATO because it allows Russia to severely disrupt vital sea lines between North America and Europe and tightens Russian control on the strategically important Northern Sea Route. The Northern Sea Route extends from the Bering Strait in the east to the Kara Gate in the west, covering approximately 5,600 kilometers. The majority of the international community views it as an international passage, but Russia views it as its own internal waterway. The Kremlin has handed the country's nuclear agency Rosatom bureaucratic oversight over the route and has limited traffic from foreign warships without a 45-day notification and the express permission from the Russian government. Summer sea ice has declined at a rate of almost 13% over the past 40 years. And the Arctic is now heating up nearly four times faster than the global average, which means that scientists now project an Arctic free from summer ice by 2040 to 2045. As more ice cover is lost, this transpolar route will be more available for more months of the year. Putin has already committed to more than double the cargo traffic along the Northern Sea Route and announced greater cooperation with Beijing to develop the route further. All this puts Russia's territorial expansion into sharper focus and underscores Putin's ambitions to control the Arctic. 
Развитие этого важнейшего транспортного коридора позволит России вполне раскрыть свой экспортный потенциал по укреплению статуса России как великой арктической державы. For many years, the Arctic was a region of relative peace and cooperation between Russia and the West. Both sides recognized the need to protect and study this precious ecological and geological site. But Russia's invasion and occupation of Ukraine has shattered this peaceful cooperation for the first time. Now Finland has joined NATO, and Sweden is set to join too. Every Arctic country other than Russia will be a member of the military alliance, giving Russia the pretense to project its perceived military power in the name of defending its borders and protecting its claim to this resource-rich territory.